Greetings, unsettled souls, and a welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. Angie doing political commentary here for the Media Speaks. Low def right there. High def there. Uh, if you're listening live, welcome aboard. If you're not listening live, go to uh, youtube.com slash to correct views. High def just looks better. Hopefully, uh, we did a reset in the studio because the higher def tends, the camera wants to keep truncating the videos down to 11 minutes. So we're seeing if we can give you really good quality in at least less than five videos. So uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, friends, this is from theguardian.com. Classify this under do not question the correct views. We are not called the correct opinions. Um, this was obvious to me. Now, if you're looking at me and you think that guy's not a physicist, that guy probably is not a doctor. You, my friend, all right, I'm not a physicist nor a doctor. And yet, I'm the only, the only person out here that predicted last Monday, look it up, it's the 14th today, look it up, go back seven days. Lady Gaga fans, use a calculator. I predicted that the robot was going to suffer death. And I even laughed at myself because I said death as if it was a, a human. The robot was going to get juiced by the radiation is what I predicted last Monday. Well, it might have been Tuesday morning. Guess what? I was right. Fukushima robot stranded after stalling inside reactor. For those of you that don't know, Radiation kills everything, real life and robotic life included. I don't think some of you realize that radiation is the cooking of the human body. It is the cooking of transistors inside of a robot. I know because it's so small, you don't see the fire, so your mind it doesn't register that something is grossly wrong here. But, uh, again, this is not fun and games. Okay, friends, I'm not out here for my health. This is bad. This is very, very, very bad. It's so bad that we don't have the technology to deal with the problem that's caused here. Listen to this. Decommissioning work at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant has suffered a setback after a robot sent into a damaged reactor to locate melted fuel known as corium stalled hours into its mission and had to be abandoned. The plant's operator, Tokyo Electric Power, that is TEPCO, that is GE, that is why you should never invest in GE, you should never have your money in a mutual fund that GE is in. They do not bring good things to life said that the robot stopped moving on Friday during its first inspection of the containment vessel inside reactor number one. One of the three reactors that suffered meltdown after the plant was struck by an earthquake and a tsunami, of course, in March of 11. TEPCO, which recently conceded that the technology for robots to retrieve the nuclear fuel had yet to be developed, said on Monday that it would cut the cables to the stranded robot and postpone a similar inspection using a separate device. Developed by Hitachi GE Nuclear Energy and the International Research Institute for Nuclear Decommissioning, it goes on, the robot was supposed to be able to function for 10 hours, even when exposed to radiation levels that would cause ordinary electronic devices to malfunction. Why are you watching the correct views? Because I'm able to look at things in ways that a lot of people aren't, such as this. What is not said in that sentence, in this article? They knew how much radiation the robots could handle when they sent it in, and it died. I don't believe that they were wrong about how much radiation the robot could handle. 
I don't think people spend this kind of money on a worm-like robot just to find out that they're wrong. No, they were right. What they were wrong about is the astronomical radiation levels that were found inside of this reactor. That is the hidden story here. I think the radiation levels were much higher than they expected. And it shows the, uh, the, the uh, picture that uses the thumbnail. 10-3 sieverts an hour? Look up what a sievert is. That's a lot, friends. It says the transformer robot, which can alter its shape depending on its surroundings, was sent in to photograph the inside of the reactor containment vessel and record temperatures and radiation rings. It had covered 14 of 18 locations. Well, uh, the first seven were relatively close to each other, from what I understand, so that's no great feat there. It says it stalled about three hours after it began its journey around the vessel, officials said, adding that they had yet to establish the cause of the problem. We cannot even get a robot to film the reactor, and yet we're supposed to believe that they are going to develop technology which doesn't even exist to move nuclear fuel out when we can't even create a robot that can get close enough to let us know where the nuclear fuel is. Sure, that's going to happen. It says, more than four years after the Fuku Daiichi suffered the worst nuclear accident since Chernobyl, a quarter of a century later, radiation levels inside the three reactors are still far too high for humans to enter. And uh, this is a much worse disaster, by the way. Uh, not the least of which, uh, the reasons being that where it's located, uh, is a, the, the ground on Japan is much different than the more solid ground that was in the uh, Ukraine at the time of Chernobyl. It says TEPCO is pinning its hopes on a new generation of remote controlled robots, <laughs> the first of which will monitor the state and location of the melted fuel before others remove it from reactors outer containers, which we don't know how to do. Last year, the dangers posed by high radiation forced TEPCO, which is GE, where you should never invest, and the government to delay the planned start of fuel removal from Reactor 1 by five years to 2025. Decommissioning Fuku is expected to take at least 40 years and cost tens of billions of dollars. It started out as 30 years. How many of you remember that? It could be wiping out millions, if not billions, billions of people people with heart disease and cancer and various other ailments if this goes on for 40 years. Don't question me. I was right last week. Look it up. <laughs> Dale Klein, uh, I wonder how many people take that seriously. Dale Klein, a former chairman of the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission, who now advises TEPCO, said dangerously high radiation inside the three damage reactors had made extracting the melted cores particularly difficult. Radiation levels, he says, in these structures is higher and working inside of them is problematic. This is a challenge that has never been faced before in the world. And there will have to be new equipment to develop to make that happen. We have no idea how to get corium out of a reactor. The corium is still in Chernobyl. They just built a great big scoffkiss around it. Which, again, the layout of Japan does not make that a very good idea, not the least of which is, uh, I'm pretty sure that the Ukraine's uh, Chernobyl structure could not take a tidal wave. I'm also pretty sure that the land location of it ensures that it probably won't. Um, Japan will see a tidal wave, so you can't solve the problem the same way. It says there's an inherent advantage to the technology that exists here in Japan to develop these new skills and techniques, given its expertise in robot technology, Klein added. Expertise? Your robot just melted down! It didn't work! What expertise? I think people, they say these things and people just believe it because the bonehead said it. It says that those tools and equipment do not exist today, but the fundamental knowledge of robotic, remotely controlled devices will, I think, be sufficient. You thought it would be sufficient this time, and guess what? It wasn't, you freaking moron. Um, this is from the 10thAmendmentCenter.com. 
former EPA administrator is clueless about the Constitution and the law. This was important to cover, and I, I just couldn't let myself get rid of it. It says, when it comes to basic, basic constitutional and legal principles, there are very few in the establishment that have even the slightest clue about the relationship between state and federal power. Former New Jersey Governor and EPA Administrator Christine Todd Whitman fits the bill, and a recent, and as a link, article by Jonathan H. Adler in the Washington Post takes her to task. It says that the critique concerns statements Whitman made in an op-ed in Politico concerning Senate Majority Leader, Leader Mitch McConnell's suggestion in an op-ed of his own that states should not cooperate with the EPA on their plan to control greenhouse gas emissions coming from power plants, nor should they implement it themselves. According to Whitman, McConnell's suggestion, quote, undermines our government as a whole, as well as our deeply held conviction that the rule of law is the foundation of any stable society. Well, that's true if the law is just. If not, then it's not true. It says this is total bunk. Adler correctly notes, stating that the Supreme Court has repeatedly and consistently ruled that states are not bound to enforce federal laws and that the EPA is no exception to this. In other words, states do not have to obey the federal law. That is why we are called the United States of America, not the United States of Federalism. Think, people! Think! It doesn't take a genius to figure this out. It says Adler, who teaches courses in constitutional, administrative, and environmental law at the Case Western University School of Law, ultimately calls her claim ludicrous, but that is putting it very kindly. It says, uh, furthermore, as former administrator of the EPA, Whitman has no excuse to be ignorant about this. The EPA has attempted to coerce state governments into doing that numerous times and have failed in court. Anti-commandeering. We'll go on just a little bit more. Don't zone out because this matters. This matters unless you want to be taxed to death for global warming, which isn't happening. Look up Climate Gate. The issue at hand is the legal doctrine of anti-commandeering based on James Madison's advice in Federalist No. 46 to refuse to cooperate with officers of the Union as an effective check on federal power. The Supreme Court has repeatedly held that the federal government cannot require states to help enforce federal acts. And it goes on to list uh, Prig versus Pennsylvania, New York versus the United States, and Prince versus the United States to prove its point. Look the article up, friends. It matters. Just because something is a federal law does not mean that states need to capitulate to it. And that matters to you if you pay taxes. So watch this and share it with friends. Um, this is from the MiamiHerald.com. In Florida, officials ban the term climate change. What is with this banning of terms? It's going to come up repeatedly in this show, so leave a comment if you catch it. It says, the state of Florida, which is where Christelle is from, is the region most susceptible to the effects of global warming in this country, according to scientists. Sea level rise alone threatens 30% of the state's beaches over the next 85 years. Now let's remember the first 15 years into this, the people that predicted this 85 years have been wrong. So they're better, they better hurry this up. Otherwise, we already know you can add 15 to that. It says, would you know that by <clears throat> talking to officials at the Florida Department of Environmental Protection, the state agency on the front lines of studying and planning of these changes, DEP officials, it goes on, <clears throat> have been ordered not to use the term climate change or global warming in any official communications, emails, or reports, according to the former DEP employees, consultants, volunteers, and records obtained by the Florida Center for Investigative Reporting. The policy goes on beyond semantics and has affected reports, educational efforts, and public policy, 
in a department with about 3,200 employees and a $1.4 billion budget. In other words, if you look those words up, you can prove right away that the science isn't for it. So just don't say the word. It says, we were told not to use the terms climate change or global warming or sustainability, said Christopher Byrd, an attorney at the DEP's Office of General Counsel in Tallahassee from 08 to 13. That message was communicated to me and my colleagues by our superiors in the Office of General Counsel. Excuse me. <coughs> Christina Trotta, another former DEP employee who worked in Miami, said that her supervisor told her not to use the terms climate change or global warming in a 2014 staff meeting. We were told that we were not allowed to discuss anything that was not true or fact. Thank God. Good. You want to know why? Because wisely they are pointing out that man is not warming the planet. Climate change done by, for those of you that believe as I do, God. For those of you that don't, the chance of the universe, uh, the Darwin fish, I don't know, the mighty moon men on the green cheese moon that we have, whatever you worship. It is there. Do you know that, for instance, historically, California, sorry, D. Lake, sorry, Anthony Court, they know this is true, has been a very dry place, a very bad place to live, a very bad place to grow food. In the recent history, according to the uh, how would you word this? In the last 200 years, 300 years, which is nothing in the life of the planet is what I'm getting at here. Recently, California has been a very great place to grow food and it feeds a great percentage of the world's population. And I understand this. But historically, that has not been the case. And man had nothing to do with it 500 years ago and man is having nothing to do with it now. Now, for those of you Green Party members, some of which I have at least some respect for, and I listen to what they say, such as uh, some things that Helen Caldercott says, some things that Jello Biafra says. For those of you that are green-minded and Green Party-centered, if you want to talk about the pollutants in the air giving us lung cancer, I'll listen to you all day long, but please do not try to tell me that we are warming the planet because we're not. It goes on here in the Miami Herald article, this unwritten policy went into effect after Governor Rick Scott took office in 11 and appointed Herschel Vineyard Jr. as the DEP's director, according to former DEP employees. Governor Scott, who won the second term in November, has repeatedly said that he is not convinced, thank God, the climate change is caused by human activity despite scientific evidence to the contrary. There is no scientific evidence to the contrary. <coughs> this article is wrong and Governor Scott is very much right. It says, Vineyard has since resigned. Neither he nor his success, successor, Scott Steverson, would comment on the article. Friends, man simply is not warming the planet. And remember that uh, Governor Scott here is on the right side of history. Um, listen to this video. Uh, there's a video link to this, I should say. This is Steve Watson, InfoWars. UN climate change officials say we should make every effort to depopulate the planet. Oh, but Sam, we should. Uh, you see, there's, a, uh, there's too many people in the world. And, if we don't kill some of these people, then there's going to be too many people in the world. Not true. How do I know this? <laughs> because do you realize it is mathematical fact? And after I say it, pause the video. Don't shut it off. Pause the video and look this up. If every man, woman, and child in the world were afforded as much living space as the average person in New York City, you could fit every man, woman, and child into the state of Texas. Am I a genius? No. 
Look up Bilderberg, why it mattered to me, and uh, you'll find that I was taught that by a gentleman that I filmed in the movie. Maybe I am a genius, because I had enough sense to film him. Uh, anyone? No, nobody at all. Okay, officials within the UN are pushing the notion that the human population should be reduced in order to effectively combat climate change. That means the best thing we can do is kill you. Kill your mom. Kill your grandmother. Do you like that? If you're talking about depopulating the planet, that's what it is, okay? They're not just depop de depopulating people that you don't happen to care about. They mean depopulating you, moron. It says the long-standing notion has been continually pushed here at 4.20 in the morning by Christina Figueres, F-I-G-U-R-E-R-E-S. No, F-I-G-U-E-R-E-S, excuse me. The Executive Secretary of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. In 2013, this bonehead had a conversation with Climate One founder Greg Dalton regarding the fertility rates in population as a contributing factor to climate change. Keep in mind, we have substantial proof that man isn't warming the planet. You don't like climategate.com? You don't, I think it might be .org. Fine. Lord Moncton. Look up Lord Moncton. It says a related issue is fertility rates and depopulation, Dalton Alban. A lot of people in energy and environmental circles don't want to go near that because it's politically charged. It's not their issue, he added. But isn't it true that stopping the rise of the population would be one of the biggest levers in driving the rise of greenhouse gases, Dalton asked. Obviously, oh, excuse me, Obviously, less people would exert less pressure on the natural resources, Figueres answered. Also, noting that estimates suggest that the Earth's population will rise by 9 billion in 2050. Do I believe that? Yeah. But listen, 9 billion, we have 7 billion now, roughly. For those of you that think another 2 billion is going to be a big deal, listen, this is why I do this show. There's another side to this. Dalton then questioned whether that figure could be in some way stalled or halted. It says 9 billion is a foregone con con conclusion? That's like baked in, done. There's no way to change it, he asked. There is pressure in the system to go forward that we can definitely change those, right? We can definitely change those numbers, figure said in response. Really, we should make every effort to change those numbers because we are already today already exceeding the planet's planetary, excuse me, carrying capacity, she also claimed. Let me ask you something. Do we have bad numbers of people or do we simply have very bad politics very bad ways of getting food to poor people, and as Sam Kinison said, perhaps very, very bad placement of people. Granted, he was a comedian, but he was right. Sometimes if you're born in a section of the world that has no food in it, my history of my people are in this spot. If you stay in that spot, you're going to starve to death. Maybe you should move where the food is. I mean, there's been other people, of course, that have said it, but he's the one who said it most concisely. It says, uh, really, yes, we should make, we should do everything possible. We cannot fall into the very simplistic opinion of saying just by curtailing the population, we solve the problem. It is not either or, or and and also, the UN official also said. Climate One is a self-described public affairs forum which advocates extreme action to combat climate change. It is a branch of the Commonwealth Club of California based in San Francisco, to quote Michael Savage, essentially a talking shop visited regularly by heads of government and corporate businesses. 
Figuries is no stranger to controversial statements when it comes to climate change. The UN official previously described as a link for it, the goal of the UNFCC is to a complete transformation of the economic structure of the world. She has also repeatedly said that the Chinese communist dictatorship is better suited for the U.S. constitutional system to fight global warming. What does that mean? Why are you listening to this show? I'll tell you what it means. It means it's better to be part of the Chinese system that will physically come to your home, take you to a hospital, and force abortions on you than is the system of child freedom which we have in America. That is what she just, that this bonehead just said. Um, there's another link that reportedly, reportedly it was said to Bloomberg News the last year that the Chinese government, which continues to enforce forced abortions, infanticide, and compulsory sterilization, is doing it right when it comes to climate change, even though China is by far the biggest emitter of greenhouse gases. In other words, they're killing babies by the millions, and uh, no one cares because uh, they still put out more greenhouse gases than even the U.S. I'm going to mention, that this, is what, uh, this is why I like InfoWars. It says, InfoWars has continually noted that there is a fundamental flaw in associating climate change with overpopulation. Why? Think about it. Well, there's all these people starving in Africa, and it's them because there's too many people living living there. You just said it, Sam. I said they're living in the wrong spot. No, Sam. No, you just said it. You just said it. If they're starving in the desert, then they probably are not running power plants. They don't own a lot of cows, which you look it up, they say cows fart and it warms the planet. They're probably not doing that, are they? Most likely not, because they're starving to death. How do a billion people or three billion people who are starving to death contribute to global warming? They don't. You can immediately factor them out. Or to put it more politely, and again, I'm not in favor of it. I'm just saying, quit blaming the poor starving people for being alive. They're not contributing to anything other than their own death because their countries are too stupid to relocate them. Populations, it says, in developed countries are declining. That would be America, Canada, Australia, etc. And only in third world countries are they expanding dramatically. And we just explained in great detail why they're not hurting anybody other than themselves, unfortunately. Industrialization itself levels out population trends, and even despite this world population models routinely show that the Earth population will level out at 9 billion in the year 2050 and slowly decline after that. In other words, 9 billion is as bad as it's going to get. And when a country becomes more developed, they tend to have less children. That is, it's fact. To look it up. I'm not even going to go on. It's not my number. It's simply true. It says the population of the most developed countries will remain virtually unchanged at 1.2 billion until 2050, states a United Nations report. So even the UN knows this. So let me ask you, why is the UN trying to kill so many of us when they know it levels out at 2050? 2050. Why? Doesn't that seem a bit strange to you when they admit in their own report that this isn't going to be a problem in just 2050? Do you realize that the Italians are dying out faster than they're repopulating? Look that up. <coughs> it says the UN's report on depopulation policies is in direct contradiction to their own findings. Once a country industrializes, there is an average of 1.6 child rate per household. So the Western world population is actually in decline. That trend has also been witnessed in areas of Asia like Japan and South Korea. 
The UN has stated the population will peak at 9 billion and then begin declining. Well, the UN's never right about much of anything, so let's say it levels out at 10 billion. Because, you know, if they tell you something's going to cost 9 billion, it's really going to cost you 10 billion. So let's say they're wrong about this, too. It's going to decline in 2050. This is only going to be a problem, if it's a problem at all, until 2050. I'll turn 30 in 2050. Okay, I'm lying. <laughs> In addition, how many of you? Oh, that doesn't make any of you get a pen out. Then that's going to be the comment I get hate mail on. In addition, as highlighted by the Economist, global fertility rates are falling. Since radical environmentalists are pushing the de to deindustrialize the world in the face of the so-called carbon threat, this will reverse the trend that naturally lowers the amount of children that people actually have. If climate change fanatics are allowed to implement their policies. Global population will continue to increase, and overpopulation may become a real problem. Another example of how the global warming hysterics are actually harming the long-term environment of Earth. In other words, this is only a problem created by the global warming crowd to a very large degree. Population rates in the Western world are not even repopulating themselves. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Uh, this show is brought to you in part by StickerJunkie.com. Rather than tell you how cool Sticker Junkie is, we'll do it this way. Do you think I'm the greatest, greatest artist that ever lived? No? Alright, good. Then I'm talking to you. I created this logo in Photoshop. David Lake at Sticker Junkie turned it into this. And this, and my favorite, this. Just gave him a logo. They did all that. You can buy those for a dollar, by the way. Get a hold of me at thecorrectviews at hotmail.com. It's my band passing time. You can help us. Sticker Junkie made that happen. You have an idea. You get that idea on paper. You get stickerjunkie.com, and you'll be happy that you did. Uh, next story and we're going to go into here. This is the truth about the gender wage gap. This is brought to you by Change Your Transportation. Do me a favor. If you're within a 50 mile radius, Christelle would say a 100 mile radius of Canton, Ohio, um, and you're going to go somewhere, make sure you find out how much it's going to cost you. Then go to Change Taxi. You can change, change transportation. You can find them on Facebook, and he will price match it within reason. Andrew Cyrios of Mises.org, the truth about the gender wage gap. How many of you have heard, women make less than men for the same job? That's not true. How do you prove it on a small scale? Pick up your local paper. Does it say hiring printer? Gonna make nine dollars an hour if you are a man and eight dollars an hour if you are a woman. No. Have you ever seen that ad? No, because that ad doesn't exist. It's not happening. It's not true. Common sense will tell you that it's not true. Well, here's some more things telling you that it's not true. Some myths die hard. The myth of the gender wage gap is one of that's been particularly, had particularly long legs. Right after winning an Academy Award, Patricia Arquette, she's a bonehead, I like her. I mean, she did a great job in the movie Ed Wood. It's one of my favorite movies ever, but she's a bonehead. Proclaimed it's our time to have wage equality once and for all and equal rights for women of the U.S., to thunderous applause. In her 11 Commandments of progress pro Progressivism, Elizabeth Warren, another bonehead, is so beside herself that she writes, I can't believe I have to say this in 2014. Well, she didn't. We believe in equal pay for equal work. President Obama established an equal pay task force, and one of her first acts was to pass the Lilly Ledbetter Fair Pay Act. 
It is all but taken for granted. Women make 77 cents on the dollar compared to what a man makes for the same work, which isn't true. I've been taught this since grade school. Indeed, it would seem to be that only people who would disagree with me are actual economists who study the issue. Great quote. As many have noted, the question quickly comes up when discussing wage discrepancies between two groups. If employers care so much about money, which progressives seem to be convinced of, why would they ever hire a man when they can hire a woman to do the same thing at a quarter of the cost? In other words, if this was true, if it was true that women made less than men, if you own Billy Bob's Tire Store, if women make less than men, for the same job, then you would hire all women, wouldn't you? Men wouldn't have any jobs, would they? Shazam, Sparky, guess what? It's part of the awakening. Welcome to the correct views. It says jobs are not homogenous. A second problem comes up just after briefly scratching the data, why isn't this wage gap even remotely close to being consistent across industries? It's not just models who make 10 times as much as their male colleagues. Women models make more than men. But also a variety, albeit minority, of different fields. <clears throat> Forbes recently, it says, ran an article based on the Bureau of Label St Labor Statistics titled 15 Jobs where women earn more than men. These jobs include bakers by 104%, teacher assistants 105%. Why can't men teach as well as women? Men make 105 less. Nutritionalists 101%. What, you mean to tell me when I tell you to take vitamin C, it's not worth as much as when a woman tells you to take vitamin C? I don't get it. Whatever you do, take vitamin C and occupational therapists 102 percent do those hiring bakers just happen to be some of the few people in this country who aren't sexist perhaps what about location the huffington post that's a rag ran a similar article based on a census data titled the 11 cities where women out earn 